great pleasure to, to be here, and I'm uh, very happy and very glad to invite uh, His Excellency Ambassador Paolo Crudele on the stage to start together the first round table. Uh, it's a very hard task, uh, because now we have to start working on the different topics related to the concept of bridging different areas, different culture, and at the end of the day, the fil rouge of the different round table is the relationship between Europe and Asia, the relationship between Italy and Asia. And before leaving the floor to, to the ambassador, I would like to highlight some, some topics. And yesterday night, and this morning, talking with uh, Pietro Guindani and Gianfranco Minutolo, we have been discussing about the idea how to start the round table. I decided to come back, don't worry, it's not very long, to uh, 1985, in which on economists there was an impressive debate about the future of the world between the two gurus of strategy, on one side Michael Porter, on the other side Kenneth Omae, and the idea was uh, what will be the future, what will be the world in uh, 30 years. And uh, coming back to the pages on economy, two gurus had very completely different ideas about the future. On, on one side, the idea of Michael Porter was the future will be global, and the concept to be global means uh, to define the value chain of whatever kind of corporation, or whatever kind of institution, uh, using all the global energies uh, spread in every part of the world. But on the other side, uh, Kenneth Omai had a very different idea. Yes, the world uh, will be global, but the concept is to be local. This, this term was uh, identified by Kenneth Omai in 1988 and became very successful a, a, couple, a couple of years ago. They disagreed about everything, but they agreed only one issue. And the issue on which they agree was the idea of the geographic map on, on the future. And the geographic map on the future was characterized not in this way, this is more politically correct, but the design of geographic map was Asia on, on the left side, Americas on the right side, the Pacific Ocean in the middle. They agree exactly on, on this topic. And here we are in 2013, uh, the idea of Asia, as you know, is, uh, is impressive. So the third of people of the world live in, uh, in Asia, 45% of the GDP with an incredible expectation of growth of GDP relating to Asia. Six countries out of 10 are listed in the ranking of ESCD as the country belonging to Asia, listed as the country that have been growing more in the last, in the last 10 years. So it's very clear that the future stay, stay in Asia. So the problem, the question mark, and, and the issue we have now in Europe is what we have to do. And as Professor Mabubani said at Bocconi University uh, three years ago, uh, during a speech, uh, the question of Professor Mabubani was, uh, how can we define our competitive strategy vis-a-vis -vis these incredible figures? In a certain sense, we have a completely different responsibility. The problem is not to say the wealth is now in Asia and the future is in Asia, now we have a different responsibility, and the responsibility is we have to define the competitive advantage of Europe, we have to define the competitive advantage of Italy, probably in a completely different ways. But I want to stop. I would like to leave the floor to Paolo Crudele. Thank you very much. <clears throat> wow, what an introduction. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly uh, where are the two gurus you mentioned from, but I'm sure they're not from Europe. Uh, as in the middle of the map was the Pacific Ocean. Um, I partly agree with that. Uh, I think that the success story of Asia, and especially in the recent years of Southeast Asia, is a success story very much interlinked to Europe. Um, of course, these countries are taking advantage of their uh, value low cost uh, of the of the main workforce at first, but they are now very edgy on in innovation and technology, and that is something that we are missing now in Europe, possibly. Uh, 
we were leaders in innovation, we were leaders in technology, now we are uh, getting overcome by, by the quantity, impressive quantity of budget spending on innovation technology in countries like China, in countries like Singapore. So, uh, there is uh, probably our, uh, our priority, that is where we should work very hardly to foster again our capability to be innovative, also because we cannot compete with countries with such numbers in terms of population, and uh, I refer to China, of course, where I was uh, till last February, and uh, we should compete on the in technological and in, uh, innovative uh, age of our companies. So when it goes back at the question that before was, um, was uh, proposed by someone about the uh, knowledge as a basis to, to restart our economic uh, process and uh, success. Uh, it's definitely yes, information technology is all over us and uh, all, also our industrial basis has to be updated in that terms. That doesn't mean, of course, to, to, to put away our industrial basis because we have a, a wonderful and very well appreciated all over the world industrial basis in Italy and of course in Europe, but in Italy mostly. And how do you see uh, Italian companies put on the table a question which is probably more, more complicated. How do you see from this part of the world the positioning of Italian companies? Do you think that is there a future for Italian companies within the area of Singapore? What is your feeling staying on the ground and managing this kind of interaction between Italy and, and Singapore or more widely uh, uh, Asia? I'm, I'm sure that Italian companies know very well that their future is in this part of the world, and they are uh, acting according to this, to this uh, strategy. Um, as far as I can say, uh, we are registering always increasing numbers of companies looking at Singapore, of course, uh, as a, as a launchpad towards Southeast Asia, but uh, we know that numbers in China are growing really, really much so. The Italian economy is looking toward Asia, of course, for the stagnation that we have in Europe, but also because this is where the GDP makes number like five, six, eight percent. So, um, from an institutional point of view, we are also trying to support this, of course. Uh, last year, we organized an event at the MFA in Italy that was the ASEAN Awareness. And that brought together leaders, political leaders and companies from the ASEAN countries and Italy. So we are trying to communicate in our country that the importance of uh, this area of the world and of course uh, uh, the, the potentiality that our companies can find settling down here. So uh, it's a trend that is definitely going to grow, it's uh, increasing and uh, as an from the institutional point of view, we have a, a big work to do because we have to try to give support to our system of uh, companies that is, as you all know, 90 95% is small, medium enterprises in Italy. So they lack some time, the capability in terms of uh, human and financial resources to face such a competitive market like Southeast Asia. And so that is where uh, institution have to try to do, to do more, support this process. Related to, to Italian company, a question uh, which are going to debate, and which you debated many, many times, it's related to, to the size, as, as you mentioned, of, of Italian companies, and sometimes the idea is that the challenge of internationalization is not affordable for small and medium enterprises. Stay here in Singapore, uh, relating to your experience also in, uh, in China, in which you stay for, for three years, uh, what's your feeling about it? That means the challenge uh, to stay in Asia is something that makes sense also for Italian small and medium enterprises or it's just simply a game for, for major companies and they cannot stay in, in the competition arena. No, they do. 
they, they have the chance to play a, a role, even though they are small, medium enterprises, because they are very innovative. They can shift on the markets very quickly. They have a lot of qualities. We all know how our industrial basis is uh, uh, various, is uh, uh, very dynamic. So they are, have all the possibilities to be present in this market with great success. But they need to be uh, accompanied by the institutions. They need some uh, banking support. Banks are very important. They play a key role in uh, giving the consultancy and uh, financial support uh, to, to, to come over these, these places. But we're talking about an area, just Singapore, for instance, it's a place where we have 300 Italian companies operating. And uh, that's not a big number, but it's just, it's already quite a number. It's, a, it's quite important. And, 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 the, and the variety of companies that are here in Singapore settle down, uh, they, they touch all our typical sectors uh, of our industry in Italy. So uh, I think it's a must. I mean, if you want to survive, uh, you have to face global competitiveness and uh, you have to face this market. But more than a must, it's a very great chance. You know, growth is here. Italian products are very much appreciated here. We have, um, we receive a sign of uh, appreciation and respect for our uh, design, for our uh, furniture appliances, fashion, luxury cars. But luckily, also for our mechanical industry, electrical industry, for our producers of uh, biopharmaceuticals, uh, so uh, we have a, a very ample wide capacity of getting into these markets and giving some added value. Last question, because too often uh, I do believe the Q&A session, uh, which is a great uh, opportunity uh, for questions coming from, from the audience and to start to, to warm up all together and facing the, these kind of topics. Uh, my last question probably is, uh, is broad, so just to start brainstorming all, all together. Our rector, Professor Sironi, mentioned the different areas, the different countries in Asia in which uh, Bocconi is, is interacting. So we have many interactions in, in China, we have interaction in uh, India, we have interaction in the Asian countries. Uh, so is a puzzle, is the same story uh, in some snapshots. What is your feeling about perspectives, competition related to these different areas of Asia? Talking about the, the, these different realities yeah, in Asia? Right, right, something about the difference of these incredible places. Well, let's talk about ASEAN. ASEAN is a place where 10 countries of very different uh, productive uh, capabilities and different skills and specialization and workforce are putting together a market that starting 2015 should be integrated. And that's in itself a great chance for our companies, for the Italian companies. Uh, but when you see those countries, you see they are complementing each other in a way, or th they are in the process trying to complement each other because uh, you do certain things in Singapore, you do different things in Vietnam, you do different things in Indonesia. Uh, there is all a uh, value chain that is going to be distributed among these countries. When, you, when it comes to China, it's a different world. That is, that is a continent, it's not a country. And, uh, and their competitiveness is, of course, shifting. It was based on the, a very cheap labor force, as we all know. But now they are uh, working very hard to be innovat innovative and, and, and trying to uh, leave behind this this model they have been developing of uh, uh, low cost products on uh, based on very cheap labor and um, scarce quality so Asia is definitely an, an, an environment of with, with multiple uh, and a very fascinating uh, differences and uh, when it comes to ASEAN region I think uh, there is the next opportunity because Italian comp companies are now focusing very much on China, India, but this is a third pole that they should consider very, very carefully. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure.